Hello and good afternoon. CTS 266, Section 840 students for the Spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Cisco Networking Academy CCMP Switch Curriculum, and this afternoon's video tutorial is going to be the solution uh, set and um, review of challenge activity number eight, where we are going to be configuring some inter VLAN routing. And it definitely looks like we're going to be doing router on a stick here. Uh, so if we were to take a look at the scenario, a router failed in the customer network. It's got to be router one that's up there. Uh, Dennis replaced the router and tried to reconfigure it. He asks you to configure R1 to route between clients and VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 40. And Dennis insists that you must not make any changes to the configuration of the user PCs. So we've got two distro layer switches here, D, uh, DSW1 and 2 two access layers, and now this is an ominous statement here, and this is typically very scary when you see this in a Cisco <laughs> activity. Hopefully, Dennis did not change any other configurations in the network. So let's go ahead and dive in here, uh, and we're going to start on router one to see what damage uh, Dennis has done, and no better way to do that uh, than with a show run. So we're going to come down and take a look here. So this is our router on a stick. Uh, and it doesn't look like much of anything uh, is configured right now. It said he tried to configure it, uh, but obviously did not get too far. So we're doing VLANs. It's Ethernet 00. zero. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, on router 1, let's go ahead and go into global config. We know we're going to be doing router on a stick just because of the way uh, the network is architected. Let's go into interface Ethernet 00. zero. I'm going to say no shut. It looked like it was, wasn't shut down. I always like to say no shut just to make sure. And then let's say interface Ethernet 00.10 uh, because we've got, let's make sure, I've got 10, 20, 30, 40. Yep, 10, 20, 30, 40. There's no indication that we need to have a native VLAN. Uh, so we're going to leave that off. So let's say incap.1q10. And then let's put our IP address on here. And for that, uh, let's go to the job aids. All right, so VLAN 10. So these are the IPs of the PCs in that column. And here are my gateways. So very straightforward. 10.0.10, 10.0.20, 10.0.30, all dot ones. So let's go ahead and say IP address at 10.0.10.1, and they're all slash 24s. And then let's say interface Ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 20, encapsulation. 1q20 IP address 10.0.20.1 and then let's go into interface Ethernet 0 slash 0 0.30 we'll get our end cap in there and remember we're putting the encapsulation on here so that when this traffic shows up at the router interface it's tagged with the VLAN that needs to deal uh, or that the sub interface needs to know uh, in order to properly handle the traffic. IP address 10.0.30.1. And on this last one, let's quickly review here. Let's remember that uh, the Ethernet 00.40, uh, make sure you remember that there is an order of operations here. So if I tried to put the IP address on here first, 10.0.40.1, you're going to see we're going to get this error right here that tells us that, hey, you're in a sub-interface and we need to have some sort of encapsulation here, uh, or some sort of tagging, I should say. Uh, so we need to have some sort of uh, trunk tagging, either 802.1Q, uh, ISL, or IEEE 802.10. So we've got to get that on there first. So let's go ahead and say encap.1Q40. Uh, and again, no native VLAN, and so then we've got 40.1. So let's go ahead and let's save off our config here. And now if I were to say show run interface Ethernet 00, you would see we've got nothing there. If I were to say, uh, let's say show run, let's just do a show run, we'll get it all dropped out here. And so there we go. So now we've got the interfaces, and I should say the sub interfaces configured. Very important uh, that you make sure that the parent interface is not shut down. If the parent interface uh, is shut down, what's going to end up happening is you'll end up with um, 
all of your subinterfaces in a down state as well. So very, very important not to shut down the, uh, the parent interface. All right, so now we, we should know what we need to do here. We've got the subinterfaces configured here, and this interface is uh, up and ready to rock. So now we need to deal with DSW1, and we need to work on Ethernet 1.0 right there. So I'm still waiting to see if Dennis has left us a surprise of some kind uh, while he was configuring things. Well, you can see here we've got rapid uh, per VLAN spanning tree. So we're using 802.1W uh, compatible. This is the Cisco mode, rapid PVST plus, because we're doing 802.1Q trunking. And uh, this is interesting. So VLANs 1, 10, 20. This is the primary, and you can tell that it was set with that macro command, uh, the spanning tree VLAN 1, 10, 20 um, uh, root primary. And then for 30 and 40, this was set up as the uh, root secondary. So that is definitely interesting. So now we've got a port channel, a layer 2 port channel running between the two switches and the mode is on. So in fact, this is simply an ether channel. Uh, no PAGP, no LACP, because we are just simply on. All right, now Ethernet 02 has guard root set, and that's okay. 03, I think those are facing, yeah, 02 and 03. And we wanna have guard root here so that we don't receive a superior BPDU from someone below us. And here is interface Ethernet 1.0 uh, with nothing configured. So uh, let's go ahead. Oops, sorry, let's go ahead and type Q. We'll go into global config mode from privilege exec into interface Ethernet 1.0 and do show IP interface brief. Let me see what we've got so far. So everything is up and looks good. So for Ethernet 1.0, it's as simple as making it a switch. Uh, I mean, a switch, a trunk port. So we're going to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q or just switch port TED. So switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. And again, you could just say switch port TED and then switch port mode trunk. And it's going to turn that guy into a trunk port. And you can see now it says that the interface has changed the state to down and then it came back up. Uh, let's make sure do show interface trunk. So which interface is on here are trunks. And sure enough, there is the trunk link right there with the native VLAN of 1, Ethernet 1.0. So let's go ahead and validate things. Uh, and it said that let's get on PC1 here. We can't change the configuration on PC1, but I should be able to ping 10.0.10.1. And we've got connectivity there. So let's go back to the diagram. Let's go to PC2. And we'll go into privilege exec, and we're going to say ping 10.0.20.1. Can I ping my default gateway? I can. Let's check out PC3. Ping 10.0.30.1. And we've got connectivity, and we would expect that here on PC4 that we are not going to have any issues. We're going to be able to ping our default gateway, 10.0.40.1. So we've got all of that. Let's take a look at our validation steps here. So from PC1, let me attempt to ping PCs 2, 3, and 4. Let's give it a try here. So from PC1, let me go ahead and say ping 10.0.20.100. So we can ping there. What about 10.0.20, oops, sorry, .30.100. Aha! So we can't ping to 10.0.30.100. What about 40.100? So we can ping that, but we can't ping 30. So let's see here. Show IP interface brief. 10.0.30.100. Let's make sure we didn't have a typo in there. 10.0.30.100. Let's give it another try. Ping 10.0.30.100. Uh, 
And so PC1 is unable to ping PC3. Now, if you don't see the desired results, make sure that you configured Ethernet 00 with subinterfaces. We did that. The Ethernet 00 subinterfaces on R1 are configured with the correct IP addresses and encapsulations. And then the DSW to R link is configured as a trunk on both sides. And that is certainly what we had set up here. So let's go back. Let's make sure we didn't have a typo here. Uh, if I were to ping, or not ping, uh, but take a look here, you can see we are 10.0.30.1. The encapsulation is correct. The subinterface is correct. The subnet mask is correct. But for some reason, it's not letting me ping PC3. So from PC3, let's see what happens if I say ping 10.0. Uh, dot what was it 10.1 and this should fail so I can't ping PC1 but let's see can I get to 2 and 4 and actually I apologize didn't want to do that control shift 6 got the wrong address in there and I think that may be my problem did I say 1 or 100 no I did say 100 all right so let's come back over here and let's pull this up and say ping 10.0.10.100 and that should fail and it is let's check with 20 can we ping 20 so PC3 appears to be having some issues here and let's check PC4 can I ping PC4 So PC3 cannot ping anyone. All right, well, PC3 is plugged into Ethernet 00 on switch 2. So let's come over here and say show run, uh, or actually how about a show IP interface brief. All right, so everybody's up, up. I'm supposed to be show run. I think it was, let's say 00. It does right here. So switch port access, VLAN 30, switch port mode access. Let's do a show VLAN brief. And that is the port, and it is up and active. How about show interface trunk? All right, so VLANs in the spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned. 30 is in there over Ethernet 02. So it's going to forward here because this is the primary. And then let's take a look here. And let's say show IP interface, or actually how about a show interface trunk. And we should see a number of trunk links. And then we've got VLAN 30 is definitely forwarding. And how about a show run? Let's make sure we don't have a VLAN allowed. All right, everything looks good there. Just checking to make sure right now that we don't have some sort of a VLAN allowed list or something that's blocking it. All right, so everything looks good there. Let's do a show run on PC3 here. And let's see what we've got. And it's... All right, correct IP address, and everything looks good. Default gateway is correct, 10.30. Can I even ping 10.0.30.1? So I can't even ping the default gateway. So let's go back to the show run real quick. Let me dump it all out here. Now I'm curious on PC4. Let's see. Yeah, so everything looks correct here. All right, let's do this. Let's do a write mem. And we are working with we are working with a an IOU a virtual iOS image here. So let's do this. Let's reload and let's see when this comes back up. 
All right, so we're up, up. Can I ping it now? 10.0.30.1. Can I ping my default gateway? All right, so now it works. So now let's come back over to PC1. And now, <laughs> look at that. Okay, so it looks like this was a case of, and this was advice that was given to me uh, at Cisco Live last year by uh, one of the presenters who was presenting on uh, DMVPN for CCIE candidates, who said that if you think your configuration is solid and you're certain that it looks good, all of your lab exam is on the IOU, which is exactly what we're using right here. He said, if you think it's solid, reboot and see what happens. And apparently that was good enough for this exercise. So again, um, everything looked good. Our config was great. Uh, we just literally needed to reload there to kind of uh, level set things. All right, and, and that is, that's it. I mean, that's literally it. If we go back to the validation steps, very quick uh, exercise here, that was everything. So we were able to ping from PC1 to everybody else. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying your spring break, and I will see you all next, or this coming Monday, actually. All right. Have a great weekend, guys.